Hello everyone. On the bench today we have a Drake L-4B linear amplifier. And the guy that owned this said he went to turn it on. When he hit the power switch, there was a loud bang and flash from underneath of the RF deck and smoke poured out. And he immediately shut it off and ran to the other side of the room. <laughs> He's uh, very scared of high voltage. Take a look at it, although I will not be powering up RF on it and see, but we'll check out everything else and make sure that it's okay. Now the power supply has already been rebuilt here recently. I got my expectations of what has happened because I have seen this before. Since the problem has uh, came from the RF deck. So uh, we'll go ahead and crack the RF deck open. I'm not going to worry about the power supply. The uh, reset buttons on the side of the power supply didn't even kick out. So I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is. So we're just going to crack it open and take a look at it. Okay, I took the uh, bottom of the RF deck off, and I'm going to warn you there is extremely lethal voltages inside this piece of equipment. So if you're working on one, you're doing so at your own risk. Um, <laughs> one mistake, and it's game over. You have to be very, very careful working on this type of equipment. And from here, just pulling the case off the bottom, I can already see the problem. I don't know if you can, but if you look up in this area right here, you'll see a lot of smut already. And I think you can see the culprit now of what that big bang was and where that smoke came from. If you see this uh, resistor right here, it's blown completely in two. Now, what this is, is a solid state relay has been installed in this amplifier. It does not come with this in it. And what this does, it brings everything up before the high voltage to the power supply is applied. So you don't hear that big chunk when you first hit the power switch. So it kind of brings it in slowly. And it looks like this resistor here just bit the dust. And there could be several things that has caused that um, in Russia current, which is supposed to prevent uh, rectifier diode here could have blowed and shorted out this resistor and it went up. But uh, every component down there is completely black from this resistor that has exploded. So we'll get in here and we'll take a look at this a little better and uh, see just what's going on so here's the schematic diagram of this uh, modification you can see our AC on switch there's that one in for 007 diode and that 5.6k um, for the 2 watt they have a 5 watt in there this is the one that exploded and we can see we have a 7.5 volt zeno diode and a 47 microfarad uh, 50 volt cap and that goes right to the relay now there shouldn't be nothing else on the other side of this circuit that would have caused this problem it's one of these components that failed and it's caused this uh, explosion to go on inside of this uh, amplifier So the problem with a Drake L4B that does not have this modification is you can see right here it's 240 volts and it comes right down to the AC power on switch and then powers the transformer. During this time you know capacitors are charging up there's a lot of surge on this AC switch. If something was to happen this switch would blow your finger is right there on that switch when you go to turn it on. And, you know, that could be dangerous to you. Also, you know, so much current, it can cause other things to fail. Like I say, the switch is the weakest link. And these switches are getting harder to find. You know, it's uh, 
identical to the ones that's in there. Now you can find some replacements, but you'll have to do some rewiring and modifying to get the switch to work. So with this uh, added relay, you can see the 240 line comes in and goes to the load side and then back out to the amplifier and then to the transformer. The power switch only controls the control side of the relay. Now this will make the power switch last a lot longer and we do not have that 240 volts across that power switch which makes it a lot safer. Plus, it, you know, the relay is a little bit time delayed, so it comes on, you know, a little bit slower than it normally would just by flipping the uh, power switch. Here you can see our modification package that it comes when you order it. It comes with the relay, resistors, a cap, two diodes, and a terminal strip and some tie wraps. So it's a very simple circuit, so it should be quite easy to fix so what I'm probably going to do is remove these wires off of this end of the relay so I can get them out of the way and we can go in here and clean this stuff up check these components see which ones are, are faulty and uh, we'll probably just go ahead and replace just about everything down here since it's all smudded up you can see that these components back here behind this wire or pretty charred itself. Let me go ahead and get these two wires out of the way. Now I've got these two wires out of the way and I think now you can see a better of idea just how charred everything is down there. You can see everything behind it here has been flashed over from that resistor uh, going nuclear and it's just carbon everything. And we'll get in here and clean this up and uh, see what we can find. Well, I got most of it kind of cleaned up. I got to do some more cleaning, but I do want to go ahead and start testing some components here. I've got that uh, charred resistor out. Got it out of the way and desoldered some of these other parts that's in here. And the first thing we want to check is this diode here and see if it's even still a diode so we're going to put our meter here on diode mode now this was something separate in the circuit so it should be okay Look almost 0.5 and nothing the other way so that diode looks like it's okay this diode here which is was in circuit this is that one in 4007 and it's completely open Check this other diode. That diode is open. Now we need to test this cap. There's a uh, resistor here too that we need to check. And according to the, uh, should be 5.6K. But this doesn't look like a 5.6k. It looks like they got a 2.2k in there. It looks like somebody's made some modifications. I guess we'll need that on ohms. And it's showing about 2.4k. So we'll probably go ahead and replace that also. So I'll get some components and go ahead and start placing. The only thing we haven't tested is this cap. I'll go ahead and give it a check also. We'll see what it comes up as. Pop 
this up so y'all can see it a little better. Forty three point seven seven with a ESR point twenty four. The cap looks okay, but we'll go ahead and replace it anyway. Well, all the components have been replaced, and you know, looking over this, I still have to wonder, you know, what caused this failure. Well, I didn't tell you to begin with, but uh, when I went to take these wires loose, this wire here on the load was completely loose. I could just move it all around, so that screw had either never been tightened up correctly or had backed out over time. So uh, I have made sure that it. They are good and tight now. And even on the control end, we want to make sure they're good and tight. Because that could cause the problem. At this time, you know, it's only speculation, but I believe that is what caused it to blow those components out. So everything's back together, so the only thing we need to do is test it and see if it'll fire up. But before we do, what we're going to do is check for continuity to make sure nothing in the circuit is shorted. So uh, we definitely don't want any shorts at all in this. So we'll come here and we'll test each one of these legs. We should have a short here, so that's the ground. problems there, no problems there, we'll go to the three legs of the uh, solid state relay, this one will be minus, so that one's on ground, so that looks good, so the only thing to do now is uh, apply some power and see what happens. Our Drake Elf will be is now ready to test to see if it'll power up and if it powers up okay we should see some lights come on our indicator lights here come on and we should get a red light on the relay so we'll go ahead and uh, everything's already wired up and plugged in so now we're ready to uh, turn the power on and there we go Everything looks good. You can see the uh, red light on the relay is on. And now she is ready to go. So our inrush relay is now working correctly. Well, that's about it on the uh, Drake L4B. Um, while I was in there, I went ahead and checked uh, the solder on the bottom of the tubes. You know, it has two 3-500Zs in it. Sometimes when these things get hot, the uh, solder will melt out of the bottom of the tube. Went ahead and checked that. Checked all the resistors and everything. And made sure everything was alright and no problems whatsoever. So I have no issues at all with this thing running up and coming up to uh, a KW with any problems. So hope you enjoyed it. No quick little video, uh, simple little fix, just something to show you to look for when you're running this high voltage stuff. You know this thing is being operated on 220 volts and anytime uh, wiring comes loose it can cause parts to heat up and eventually blow out as you've seen. So okay uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Leave your comments down below and we'll see you later.